Welcome to another edition of How to Fix It Yourself with Dave and Dave. Today we're looking again at our Tacoma upgrade that we've been working on for the last uh, few episodes. Uh, this particular episode we're going to be looking at installing leather seats. So we'll be removing the cloth seats and putting in leather seats. Now this is not a cover like we did with the Ford some weeks back. This is where we're actually replacing the entire uh, seat cover. In order to get this from the factory, you'll need to order a Tacoma Pro, which is, plus all the other upgrades that come with it, uh, cost you about an additional $10,000. So if you're into do-it-yourself and trying to upgrade your Tacoma and make it uh, cost-effective by doing the labor yourself, this is a good way to go. We hope this will be a very uh, informative video. We'll show you the good, bads, and indifferences as we go, uh, because frankly, this is the first time we've done it as well. So as we run into issues, we'll let you know so that you can avoid running into those issues as well. We'll show you our successes as we go also. It's a lot easier to get a factory rebuild kit returned and all the parts in a new kit when you haven't already partially installed the items. So you'll notice that we now have the gray cloth seat. And so now we'll lay out, at least on the passenger side, the pieces that you need to be sure that you've got them all there. So this is the back. This is the seat back. You can see it has the pouch and uh, with it already and the openings at the top for the headrest. So that'll take care of that part. This is the bottom of the seat here. And then this is the new headrest cover. So you'll notice that we've already got them all laid out. We do have all the bits and pieces. So now we're gonna be ready to go ahead and get started. We're gonna start on the back seat first. We hope that that'll be a little easier to get started on to kind of learn what we're doing and help you learn what we're doing as well. So the brand that we're using to replace the seat covers with uh, is a company called Cat, Cats Kin, K-A-T-Z-K-I-N. Uh, they make a variety of different leather uh, seat covers as well as other auxiliary items, but it's a good place to go for this particular model. Good quality leather. So one thing you really do not want to forget before you get started is to make sure you get a package of hog rings and a tool for clamping them. It's the only way you're going to get these seat covers on properly or get the seat reupholstered properly. Uh, you can get this on Amazon. Check our links below for the uh, link to get the uh, items, to order these items. We appreciate you using our links for acquiring tools and other items that we talk about in our video. All right, in the rear seats, uh, both the uh, small seat on the driver's side and the two-thirds seat on the passenger side, they're held on by uh, just two bolts. They're a 13 millimeter bolt, and so it comes out very easily. Just go ahead and uh, remove the bolt. Go ahead and on there, loosen it up. Once you get it loose, you'll notice that you can pretty well take them out by your fingers. Now for me, when I take out a bolt in these situations, I like going ahead and using the socket with my fingers. It gives me a little more leverage. So the next step is you want to remove this plastic, which is over a lip on this piece of metal. I like to start here in the uh, sharpest corner. It seems to always work the easiest. So you just get a uh, removal tool under there. You can use a flathead screwdriver. Uh, get, get yourself a good start. Then you just start working your way around to start just peeling that off of there. Get a good start on it. And once you get it down, then you'll notice that it'll start 
coming off fairly easily after you kind of get get it a good start on getting it rolled down. So now we're getting it rolled down. So now it becomes just a little easier to just continue working your way around on these. And you know how to go from there. You can just work your way all the way around just a piece at a time. Take your time. You don't want to tear anything or rip anything up. Just keep working it off of there. So we've now got the uh, plastic all off of the uh, metal lip here. So this metal will just come right off. And you'll notice that we have a preformed uh, seat cushion uh, ready to go. Now, one thing to notice is that there's several hog clips around holding this together. So th on this side, you want to be careful not to pull any of those through. But when we look at the other side, you'll notice that there's some that we need to cut. So now we need to flip it over in order to start taking the uh, cloth seats off. Notice that they come off fairly easily. Now, you will find that there's some location items that keep the seat cover in place that you'll want to be sure you recognize because you'll need to match those with the replacement seat cover. That's how you, seat cover keeps from being uh, tossed around or moved as you sit in it. Now some of the locations like this one, if you can see down in there, you notice it's hog tied to a uh, piece of, of uh, either metal or plastic that runs through the foam. And so those are going to need to be cut. So we'll just go ahead and cut those right now. So you'll notice that we get down in there. I strongly recommend you get a real good pair of uh, clippers. This is a, a small pair of bolt clippers by Tecton. We'll have this link, link in the uh, links below. But you just get in there, cut it. They're fairly stiff. And then you pull the pieces out second. So normally they have two or three of these. This particular spot has two. On that side, then you'll notice that now around this part, we have some more. So in order to get to those, we need to pull the rest of the seat cover off. And that gives us our ability to get into these here. Okay, and then we have the last couple that are here. There we go. And that takes the cover right off. The um, hog clips that they have in here, you, of course you'll want to take all the bits and pieces out, but you'll notice the hog clips they have in here are actually a fairly stiff metal, so you're going to need something uh, more than just a regular wire cutter. You can make it work with the wire cutter, but you may find that your wire cutter is not quite as good as it was before, because these will definitely tear them up. All right, so we're now going to just get all the bits and pieces out of here so we can put the uh, new cover back on. Now we got a very cheap and expensive pair of hog pliers that came with the bag of hogs that we uh, purchased. Again, this will be in the links below. Uh, it works just fine uh, for a one-time deal. Certainly not something you want to do for a long run. Uh, you'll notice that it has some indents where the hog clip goes in and holds. My recommendation is that you pre-bend the hog clip a little bit so that it makes it easier and you've got a better grip when you put it on the seat itself. Um, now if your budget is big and you want to go buy a uh, pneumatic hog clip, then some of this will be really easy, but we're just going with the easy do-it-yourself method here. And we do not have a, hog, uh, a pneumatic hogger. So we're going to just do it the easy way or the inexpensive way. So now you'll notice that when we took these off, 
that there is this bar down here. You can see it right there. It's orange against the yellow. That's what this has to go around. So it has to go around this plastic piece and that bar down there in order to secure it. Now, with a pneumatic one, you could just go ahead and do it right now and it would punch through everything. With trying to do it with a hand one, you're gonna need to cut yourself a little slit where it's gonna go. So you wanna line it up, make sure that you're lined up on the back one here as well, so as that you're not sliding this too far forward or too far back. So make sure that everything is lined up and then you're ready to go. So at this point, now we know where we need to be. We're gonna take a box cutter, cut ourselves a little slit right there. Go ahead and put the hog ring in, into the slit, and then just kind of jam everything all the way down in there and pinch the hog ring off. And now we have our first clip. And that's just what you're gonna do all the way around. So you've got another clip that's gonna go here. You've got two clips that's gonna go in the back. And then over on this side, you've got two clips as well. So just follow that pattern and you'll be in good shape. Okay, so we've got all the hog rings in. We've got this part nice and secure. So again, make sure that you get the seam here into the grooves. Now it'll naturally go into the grooves as uh, you sit on it and you use it. And at this point, it's just a matter of starting to wrap it around the foam and get, get it wrapped around on the foam. So we kind of get it start from the top side and then we'll flip it over and we'll finish putting it on uh, from the bottom side where it'll be able to pull it up nice and snug and tight. So we'll kind of get a good start here. And as always, you notice your last corner, just like anything else, is always going to be a little more of a challenge. But just keep working at it and it'll come around. So now we want to just get everything pulled up nice and snug. Make sure we have everything down in. All right, so at this point, we're now ready to go ahead and put the uh, metal backing on and we'll have ourselves a seat. All right, so now we're ready to put the metal backing piece on. Now, remember that when we took it off, there was a piece of plastic that went over this channel. The way these are designed is they have the plastic piece that goes down into the channel. So it's a little easier in some regards, but you just have to work at it. Now one spot, and just, just keep working it around, it'll all come together. Again, your corners are gonna be your biggest issue, and you're gonna have to get some pressure to get it down in there. So we've got those in. Now, one of the areas that is going to be a little bit different than these, is going to be this cutout. And I'll get there in just a second. Let me go ahead and get these put in. Okay. So the cutout actually has this piece that's going to actually go over the channel. It's the only way you're going to get it to stay in place. Now this is very tight. You'll notice that it's really a stretch to get it all the way up there, but you do need to get it into the channel. So on this one, we're gonna go ahead and just start working our way around to get it in there. And like I say, it's gonna be very, very tight to get it put on there. So we're gonna work on this for a minute and then we'll come back and show you how it worked out. But just remember, you've gotta get it down into the channel. You can see how this piece here is starting to go down into the channel. So we've got the, uh, all of the plastic into the groove. 
it seems to be holding nice and tight. We did put this over the lip because that's the way it was designed to go. So let's see what we've got. There we do. We've got a nice leather seat. Looks really nice. A few of these little wrinkles will work out over time if people sit on them and it sits out in this hot Arizona sun. But I think we've got a good, good seat here. Looks nice and professional. And it'll give us some good wear for a good long time. So that's the seat bottom. Next we've got the seat top we'll work on. To remove the seat back on this side, you've got this seat belt here that's got to come off. It's anchored down to the frame. So this bolt here has to be pulled. So we're going to go ahead and pull that bolt. This is going to take a uh, 14 millimeter socket. So just go ahead and pull that. Okay, so now we've got the uh, seat belts loose. Uh, you'll notice this is held on with a uh, snap ring so that the bolt doesn't come out. I think we can get that up through there, but I'm not so sure about the, whether this will go up through there or not. Oh, it does, okay. So that'll go up through there so you don't have to actually pop that snap ring loose. All right, and then we've got these plastic covers on either side of the seat that uh, uh, cover the uh, where the bolts are. So you need to get underneath that and just pop it loose. And there's the bolt. One on that side as well. Uh, this is again just the 14 millimeter. So you just we'll just take and loosen this a little bit, then we'll go ahead and get working on the other side. So that's now loose. So we'll go do the other side and pull the seat. All right, so with the seat out now, we can start getting this area loose for this seat belt because we're going to have to feed this back through the cloth and then back into the leather seat. The way this works is you get a screwdriver and you pop the front and there's just a couple of little spring clips that are plastic, so be gentle, don't want to break them. Then these also have a couple of little spring clips that hold this in that go into a holder on the front side. So you can see how that slides in and captures on the back side of the uh, seat here. And so you want to take that out and now we have enough room to where we can get the whole seat belt out once we take the cover off. Now some of these others we don't need to worry about right now. We can take these off with the cover. Um, they all slide off along with the cover. Um, some of these are just wrap around, they're uh, fully inside the frame, so as it, it just wraps around the cloth, just comes out around these, and you just leave these in place. Uh, this one we'll need to pull a little bit later as well. So the next stage is we're gonna go ahead and, just like on the bottom seat, we need to go ahead and remove the plastic. Now the plastic uh, hold down has three screws, one there, one there, and one over here. Now these are uh, number two Phillips uh, screws, so get yourself a number two Phillips screwdriver. Uh, take those out, once you get those three out, the seat will slide back a little bit and then come right off. It has some hooks that hold it in place in a couple of locations. Here, 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 here. And once those are out, then you can uh, go ahead and pull the plastic. So that's what we're going to do next. Okay, now that we've got the uh, screws out, just pick up on the bottom part a little bit and just slide it back out and it'll come right off. Again, you'll notice that there are some uh, clips here that go in against the metal bars here, here, and here. So as we said, there was three uh, on the top and there's only two along the mid. So we put it back in, we've got to make sure that these re-engage with the metal bars that are there to hold that in place. All right, so now you'll notice that we've got some a cross bracing that holds the seat cover on. We need to remove those. And once we get those off, just a matter of pulling them. 
And they will be a little bit tight because that's their design is to hold the seat cover on. All right, now the next step is you have these that are connected to these bars. So you've got one more of those type of clips there. We might as well go ahead and get those out of the way now. Come on. All right, and then we've got these that need to come off of these clips. Now this is a little bit difficult. Uh, so go ahead and get started on one edge, and if you get started on one edge, then you work your way around to get it loose. Then you've got that one on the top, you've got these on the bottom, which seem to be a little, a little tighter. Again, if you can get one side loose, then it's a little easier to work your way across. And you might need a little, a little help. There we go. Hmm. This one's definitely being stubborn. There we go. All right. So there's a couple more uh, little clips that go over these bars down here. Again, you've got a large seat here, so you want to make sure that you've got plenty of traction to keep everything in place. All right, so fundamentally now we've got the seat cover loose, so we can now start kind of working our way around to start peeling it off. Again, working on the small side up here first is a little easier. Uh, you'll need to feed your clips back down. through there. And we really don't want to take that off of the foam, so we'll just carefully pull that around, flip the whole thing over. Now we're up against these items here at the top. So go ahead and work that off of there. Okay, now when you get to these, you're gonna have to just work the material out from around these guys and that may be now, if you really don't care about your seat, you can go ahead and just cut them. But again, you'll notice that if you just work it and just pull, you can work your way around these guys to get them off. All right. So now we're down to that. And as you'll notice here that we just have to be patient. Just kind of work around to get everything through the, the slots. Just be patient and careful. You can make it all work. Okay, that takes care of the seat belt. Now this guy's a little more problematic because uh, it has a, a clip put in place to keep it from going through easily. So we're gonna come back to that one in a minute. We'll go ahead and work on the other side and get down to where we're dealing with just that one there. Again, just pull the cloth out from around these guys here. All right, so other than this 
the uh, release strap. We've fundamentally got the seat all removed, but now we're back to the clips that we need to, oh, that's right. There are clips, but there's also Velcro. So these have a Velcro spot to hold those in place, which is really quite nice. Makes our life a lot easier. We'll have to get a little glue and glue that one back down. Uh, and then we're back to the hog rings, which you can see right there. All right, so we've already pulled the seat release uh, loop through so you can get the seat to release. We're now going to put in the guard for the seat belt. Again, that just slides in. It clips into the front of the, there's a hard plastic liner right there. So you want to make sure you get these clips underneath that hard plastic liner. get that snapped into place and then put the cover back on okay so now that piece is all done ready to go we've already pulled the seat belt through so at this point we're now ready to start working on the back side to pull everything tight and get everything pulled back together again All right, so now that we've got it flipped over, we're ready to start putting everything back into place. Now, one of the things that's important is to be sure to get these fed. Now, these need to go underneath this clip bar here. This is a clip bar for uh, child protective seats. And if you don't do this correctly, you'll find yourself taking the seat all apart again to get it fixed. Um, and, you know, we like to not take things apart once we put them together again, but you know, that's kind of us. So you'll notice that that comes up, hits this slot right there, so that it works. Then you can go ahead and pull that on up tight, clip that onto the bar, and now you've got two more to go. So you've got the one in the center, again make sure that you've got this flap doesn't go underneath this. This flap has to be on the outside, just like we had here, so is that you have the uh, slot exposed. Go ahead and pull that up and get that snapped on. So the next one we're going to do is going to be clip this one over this bar here. That's really important to do this one next. Again, if you can get it started on one side, it'll kind of walk its way around the bar. Come on, get on there, you sucker. Okay, there we go. Okay, now you can just kind of walk it down across. Get it all the way on. There we go. All right, now, we have these two that need to come together and, oh, let's see, I've got one more that's got to come and clip. Let's be sure we get all the clips first. So this one's got to come back here, click on there. All right, so now we've got all the ones that click. Now, these two here and these coming across in the factory ones, they had little plastic slides that interconnected. On these, you're going to use hog rings to click these together. So it's just exactly the same way you did before. So the first two we'll do will be this one here. So we'll put the little slots in and hog ring those. Then we'll do the these sides here. And then we'll be ready to put the back on. Of course, as we get rid of all this pulled together, we'll just reassess everything, make sure everything's nice and tight, and we have as good a fit as we can possibly get. All right, so we've got everything hog ringed together, and everything clipped that needs to be clipped. We've got good tension on everything. So now we'll flip it over and see how it looks. Got a little bit of a wrinkle here will work out. But other than that, this looks nice and tight, looks good. We've got the exposure for the uh, child uh, seats there on the bottom. So those are all good to go. 
So now it's just a matter of putting the uh, plastic on the back. So that's what we'll work on now. All right, so when you put the plastic piece back on, again, remember, we've got these hooks that we have to hook onto the different bars around. So you kind of line it up, see where they're at, go ahead and drop it down, make sure that you have all the corners started and the middle piece is started. And then you're going to want to start sliding that up. And frankly, this is where if you have a good buddy down the street that'll help, this will be really useful. Then start making sure that you're hooked on all of the spots. Just pull up a little bit, make sure you're there. Then it's time to put in the screws. So with that in place, we've got this screw hole lined up. This one's pretty much lined up right there. And we've got this one pretty well lined up. But you gotta watch it because as you move around, things will pop out. You notice this side popped out right there. So you've gotta kinda watch it and make sure you keep everything down. So this is where a couple of extra hands really pay off. All right, so we've got the back on now. We've talked about how you have to make sure you've got all the clips in place. Uh, it does take a couple of hands. The screws are not very long, and so putting them back in can be a little bit problematic. So if you have a, a magnetic screwdriver, it'll hold the screw on the end while you get a position. It'll probably be a really big help. Um, other than that, it's likely to get fairly um, frustrating trying to get it on without a magnetic screwdriver. But you'll notice we've got all the corners nice and solid. Everything is on there properly. Take a look at the other side and everything's lined up. We just have to now be sure we get the seat, seat belt latch back down through the elastic. Again, work carefully to make sure that you don't tear anything up while you get the screw down. And now we have our seat belt back in place. So we're now ready to put it back into the car. We do have the headrest we have to do before we put it in the car though. Now they do not put the cutouts for the headrests. You can feel there's one right there, one right there, and then there's one there and one there. So these will be holes that you'll have to cut, but as we talked about when we pulled it off, it's just a matter of working it around the parts that are built in so you don't have to do a big cut. You can just get away with a little cut and just stretch things. So that's what we're going to work on next, get those headrests ready to go, and then we'll go ahead and do the install. For the headrests, you'll notice that the factory seats have a cutout for going around these, and we talked about pulling it off and how you just had to pull that around this. Now with these, uh, as we didn't want to miss and cut too wide, we just did a little X across the center and then just kind of worked it around and just trimmed pieces that needed to be trimmed. We're not showing that because we want you to figure it out for yourself. Uh, we're not advocating anything here, just that you need to have your headdress exposed and so you can see what they've done. I do not recommend cutting a slot as big as this because it's very likely that you'll off-center it and then you'll have cuts out here or wherever. So try and find uh, by pressing where the center point is, get yourself a little X on the center point and then just kind of work around it until you get it pushed in around the uh, edges. Same thing for the little ones on uh, that's underneath this particular headrest here. So that's how we get the headrest put together. So the next thing we're gonna do is we've already covered the small headrest. We're gonna go ahead and cover the large headrest and then we'll install the uh, seat back and then we'll install the uh, bottom seat. So putting the headrest on the top part's fairly easy. Be sure you line it up so your red stitching is closer to the post here because this is the front. The long side goes to the back. Once you get it most of the way on, from there it's just a matter of pushing and shoving and, and pulling to try and get everything lined out 
so you can get it on. All right, so as we go ahead and finish up putting on the headrest, as I was mentioning, go ahead and just kind of work it. You just have to use a little bit of patience and keep stretching and pulling until you have it on nice and tight. Um, of course, the final tightness will uh, come as you uh, put the clips together, but you want to get it on nice and snug. You can kind of work it down. Make sure you get it down as tight as you can. It will make your job a lot easier when you start putting the clips together. Go ahead and pull those. Pull those. All right. So it's important that you align the uh, plastic between the uh, two posts here. So you may have to work the uh, uh, seat one way or the other a little bit. This one's lined up pretty well. All right. So there's not a huge trick to this. It just takes a little bit of patience. But if you notice that this has got to slide into the slot there. So I don't know if we can position this in a way that you can see that. But if you pull that across and flip it over and work on one side or the other, you can kind of get that to pop down into the slot. Now, it may be easier to start with one of the side pieces. I uh, don't know. Um, try and get that in there. Maybe you can see that a little easier, that how we're slowly working that into the top part of that. So that clipped in. So now we'll do the same thing on the center post. Again, it's just a matter of Everything's very tight and snug, which is what you want. So just go ahead and just keep working it. And eventually you should be able to get it to pop over onto the Keep almost getting it, and then we there we go. Okay, there. All right. So, like I say, it just takes a little patience, a little effort, and uh, a little bit of hand strength, and you can get it to pop on. Of course, the fact that it's uh, 102 degrees here in Phoenix right now it doesn't uh, certainly help make everything flexible. I certainly want to wouldn't want to be doing this at 30 degrees uh, up in the north part of the country during the winter months. So we'll just go ahead and set the seat back up in here. Go ahead and get it lined up. <laughs> on the uh, go ahead and get it lined up with the screws there we got one screw lined up there's the other one lined up okay again I'm gonna use the socket just in my fingers get that kind of tight not too tight because we have to get the other side Go ahead and let's see here. Okay, all right, so again, just a socket. And pull it down kind of snug, not too snug, because you want to be sure you, you're not overdoing it on one side instead of the other.
Okay, a little bit snug there. A little bit snug here. There we go, okay. A little bit snug there. And then we'll do the tighten. Good, strong. <clears throat> On both sides. It's very important to get that in there. That's how you know it's tight. <clears throat> All right. Then we put the uh, covers back on. Come on. There you go. Slap down in there. Okay. Good and tight on both sides. And there we go. All right, so the next sta stage is to go ahead and get the seat belt put back into place. Seatbelt works. That'll come up and that'll work. Okay, we're ready for the uh, bottom seat. So you want to be sure you get the indent lined up. All right. Now we got one side. All right, Whew. so with a little patience and perseverance, you can see that we've got the back seat taken care of. It takes a number of hours, so this is probably not something you're gonna do a complete car in one day unless you have some automated tools to kind of help you with everything. But it's very satisfactory. You know, it looks great. It looks like a factory seat. Uh, it has all the characteristics you want in a good, dark leather seat uh, to go with your Tacoma. So that'll end this episode. Again, please click on the subscribe button if you haven't already subscribed. Please click on like. And if you want to be notified when episodes come available, please click on the bell icon. We will be putting links to the various tools that we've used and the uh, various uh, products we've used on uh, the links below the video. Please click on those, it helps us and it really helps us be able to continue to do videos like this. And in part two of this, this was part one, in part two we'll do the front seats. They're basically the same, but they have some differences that you'll need to know. So good luck with your seat install. I think you'll have a successful time because you saw what needed to be done and also what you shouldn't do as we've worked through this uh, seat cover for ourselves.